Hello, Assalamu alaikum. This is the fifth lecture on the firearms and its mechanics. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the components within the cartridge which are responsible for bonding. So each component will be discussed in detail, the mechanism of its those effects on the wound and how they help in determining the distance of fire and the medical legal significance. So continuing with the lecture number fifth on the components of firearms. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Javed Iqmal Koker, Professor and HRD of Forensic Medicine Department in CMH Lahore Medical College. So the components of uh, firearm or uh, any cartridge which are responsible for wounding or damage or what are the wounding elements which are responsible for the damage to the human body or any other surface where it strikes. So that's why it is important for us to understand that what are the components which are responsible for wounding. The ammunition may be of any use, that is, it may be in rifled weapon, that is handgun, or the assault rifles, but the basic components which are responsible remain the same. Whether it is smooth board, whether it is a rifled weapon, there is a short charge. That means the pellets or the bullets, they are the most important which are responsible for damage. Then there will be emitting flame. So the heat and flame up to few inches will cause burning. And the hot gases or the compressed pressure gases traveling alongside the bullet will also show its effect in the form of cavitation. Then the smoke, the completely burnt carbon particles will be soiling the surface and the surface will become blackened. So that is blackening phenomena by the deposition of the completely burnt particles. Then in smooth board weapon, there is another very characteristic element that is wad. Wad may be of any material, plastic or cardboard. They are in the shape of discs. They are placed in at the rear end and the front of the pellets and they move like piston within the barrel and their function is to remain, to keep the charge compact manner for longer distance after the exit and within the barrel. Then the burnt, partially burnt gunpowder particles, they also travel alongside the bullet and they get embedded into the skin up to few inches and sometimes up to three to four feet or one to two yards, depending upon the type of weapon then that embedment of the burnt or partially burnt particles into the skin is called tattooing. So the grease collar will also be sometimes visible that the lubricant which is used or lubricating the barrel, sometimes it soils the bullet and it may travel alongside and will soil the wound and make a grease collar. Then the metal fragments, which cause fouling, that is the shaving of the barrel with the rub of the bullet. These are fine metallic particles which travel alongside the bullet and may cause the fouling. Then if the muzzle end is pressed hard against the victim's skin, being it's too hot, it will give an imprint that will that is called as muzzle imprint. So these are 
various important bonding elements which are responsible for your for their effects on the human body or the victim these are two uh, shapes you can see the shape of the bullet the handgun and the rifle bullet the handgun bullet having the rounded nose whereas the rifle has the sharp pointed now we'll discuss the muzzle end when it firmly presses against the skin it will cause muzzle imprint so when the muzzle end is held against the skin there will be no circular or oval bone like typical entry bone but irregular bizarre shaped and stellate shaped injury will result because the gases or the charge will recoil back and that will cause extensive laceration laceration so when the muzzle is firmly pressed against the body an imprint will be seen and this gives an idea about the type of weapon these this is a picture showing the margin of the muzzle imprint this is another picture showing the imprint this is the shape of the muzzle end the imprint is of the shape of the muzzle end of the weapon this is an also gives the idea that the shape of the muzzle imprint is like the muzzle end of the weapon now the hot gases effect or the compressed hot air which is traveling alongside the bullet is going to affect the these hot compressed gases when they are traveling along with the short charge they produce its effect and it depends whether there is underneath soft tissue or there is bone if there is underneath bone then the whole charge will be striking backward and there will be extensive splitting of the bone and it may appear a stellate shape or star shape bone and this is a different this exit margins are different than the exit bone because the margins here will be everted because of the recoil so these everted margins or this appearance will be different because there will be other characteristics of the anti bone burning blackening which will not be there in the exit bone so a stellar shape injury will be seen when the muzzle is pressed against some hard under surface that is the bone and a star shape injury will be produced this is another picture showing the much less irritated everted margins then the flame and heat will be causing you can see the flame emitting out of the muzzle end and they are going to affect the victim surface up to few inches so this flame will cause burning here you can see this is a movie showing the flame being emitted from the muzzle end
so this flame which is emitting it is going to affect up to few inches and this flame will cause burning of the skin and the clothes scorching of hair and skin and singeing of hair singeing of hair means that the keratin of the hair will be solidified and a drumstick style appearance that is singeing of hair these are the burnt margins and the hair in the vicinity they are also burnt then the concentration of carboxy hemoglobin and carbon monoxide combined with the hemoglobin the concentration of carbon carboxy hemoglobin will determine the entry and the exit mode the concentration in the both will be different and this uh, flame effect is seen up to few inches from the weapon and in case of long barrel it can be up to longer distance for 1 to 3 feet but for short barrel weapons it will be up to few inches then the gun powder is showing will be showing its effects the gun powder depends upon the what type of gun powder is it it is it is uh, smoked or black gun powder it will cause tattooing so completely burnt gun powder will produce smoke and smoke is going to soil the surface or unburnt or partially burnt particles heavier they will be traveling and will cause tattooing so gun powder will be in the form of smoke or in the powder tattooing this is the smoke this is traveling along the bullet and the smoke will cause blackening and they are in close range or near contact fires and if you wash the surface they it can be washed easily but it will soil the clothes and the skin surface and smoke also helps us in determining the direction of the fire because it will be deposited away from the direction of fire so it can easily be you can judge the direction of fire so when you wash it away it will be easily washed but the tattoos that the gun powder which is embedded into the skin it will not be washed this is a burning and the smoke effect and if you wash the area the smoke will be washed where the margin burnt will not be so this is the uh, histological histological site slide showing the carboxy hemoglobin concentration and you can compare with the entry and exit port so burning will be up to few inches and blackening will be absent up to 1 yard then the powder tattoo which is caused by the partially burnt unburnt carbon particles which are traveling alongside the bullet and they will be deposited into the skin embedded into the skin so the powder tattooing is due to unburnt burnt or partially burnt coarse gun powder particles they pierce the skin they pierce into the superficial layers of the skin causing punctate abrasions of small blood vessels underneath the skin so these small punctate hemorrhages with the gun powder are called tattooing these are the tattoos deposited these are the two pictures showing the unwashed and washed 
So the powder tattooing or stippling or peppering is the same term. It presents, it is present around the wound and the resemble as the peppers has been sprinkled. And this is due to deposition of unburnt or partially burnt heavier gunpowder particles. And they are more common in black gunpowder. Whereas in smokeless, there are less chances. And it is absent beyond two yards. But depending upon the type of weapon, how much it is choked, so the uh, tattoo marks will be varying upon the type of weapon. So when blackening is there, tattooing is always present. It leaves small punctate hemorrhages on the skin by the embedment of the particles into the skin. So it helps us to determine the direction of fire, that the bullet is stuck at right angle or tangential. The distribution of stippling will help us in direction of determining the direction of fire. If it is fired at Tangentially oblique angle, it will be distributed on one side. This is showing the, that the fire has been from the left side of the face. This is the burnt surface and when the clothes are intervened, they are burnt. So about the skin damages, there will be gross splitting. Normally there is a less irritated wound, but depending upon the range, the distance, the tail wag phenomena, or the hot gases effect. So this splitting will de depend upon many other factors. So the projectile, when it will showing various characteristics, it will change the appearance. And there can be bruising. So we'll discuss this in detail in the next lectures. The color of abrasion, this is because when the bullet of, this is specifically shown in the rifled weapon. Because of rifling, the bullet is spinning, revolving around its own axis. And this bullet when indents and indenting and rotational movement on the skin will cause rubbing of the margin and it will form color of abrasion. Thank you very much. That's all for today. And if you like this video, please subscribe it and share with others. Allah Hafiz.